استوى يا من خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى يا من أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأسعد وأشقى وأوجد وأبلى ورفع وخفض وأعز وأذل وأعطى ومنع ورفع ووضع يا من شق البحار وأجر الأنهار وكور النهار على الليل وكور الليل على النهار يا من هدى من الضلالة وأنقذ من الجهالة وأنار الأبصار وأحيا الضمائر والأفكار يا من تسمع كلامنا وترى مكاننا وتعلم سرنا وعلانيتنا لا يخفى علينا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid, and I welcome you. Uh, this is Monday night. Uh, we have uh, Let's Pray the Prophet's Way. Let's Pray the Prophet's Way. That's the lecture we have tonight. Let's Pray the Prophet's Way. And uh, we have lecture number nine tonight. Lecture number nine tonight. We're still at chapter seven. Um, which is the <coughs> conditions of Salah, the six conditions of Salah. and uh, But this is lecture number nine from the series, Let's play, uh, Pray the Prophet's Way. Uh, and I want to let you know, brothers and sisters in Islam, that uh, the playlist is available. Uh, there is a playlist uh, available for, uh, for you, uh, which has the complete uh, uh, set of lectures. Uh, as we uh, finish up, inshallah, uh, the book, Alhamdulillah, I'm reviewing uh, the second revision, which is I'm at chapter, I think, six today. So maybe uh, this week uh, the book will be complete and uh, hopefully we'll work on publishing it, inshallah. So you have the material ready for a whole month uh, before the test, inshallah, uh, ta'ala. Let me uh, welcome those who uh, showed on the broadcast. Uh, it's always good to have you, uh, Brother Ismail. Good to have you, Brother Ismail. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Ahmed uh, Mahbub. Wa alaykum assalam. Uh, Ahmed Mahbub. It is in English. Uh, yes, it is in English. What is in English? The book. It is in English. Everything is in English. Mashallah. Uh, okay. Uh, Abu Bakr Muhammad. Uh, from Houston, how are you, brother Abu Bakr? And we have uh, Nab Nabudu Nabudun. I don't know uh, all these signs. Uh, Imam Karim Abu Zaid, that's me. Okay, and we have Sister Um Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Um Muhammad. Jazakallah khairan for your dua. And inshallah, Sister Um Muhammad, uh, maybe in a, in a, she requested how can, uh, because a lot of her family members. Um, I think in South Africa, I read your message, sister. Uh, they are having COVID, and uh, quite frankly, sister Um Muhammad, there is nothing I did. You know, I'm I'm still, uh, yani going through the uh, the stages of it. But uh, I'm telling you, dear sister, um, 
the dua and uh, you know connecting your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 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 the sister basically was asking me to explain how uh, you know uh, the COVID and how did I handle it and all of this um, um, you know الرضا بقضاء الله وقدره والله يا إخوة عبودية الرضا هذه that you accept what Allah decrees upon you and and you say Alhamdulillah and you say Alhamdulillah because you always trust the wisdom of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and and this is like I said the provision of faith where I ask Allah to be of those who believe but this is what faith does for for people. Uh, that's what people don't realize that uh, uh, the world is in disarray because of losing that. that they, they, they think they are in control. They think they do things because of them. No, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does everything. Yes, there are some means. Um, uh, I kept on, uh, 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 you know, taking uh, vitamin C, vitamin D. Uh, these are all means. You have to seek the means beside your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, you know, you, you have to uh, work hard to make sure that your chest is 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 uh, can handle uh, because the COVID attacks the chest, the the lungs. So you have to make sure that you you're working out. Uh, so this way, uh, you know, you um, uh, you breathing okay. So these are some things, inshallah, and maybe we'll talk about it more, inshallah. Uh, Sister Fatima, alaykum salam. Brother Kamal Hussein, alaykum salam from Virginia. Good to have you, brother Kamal. Uh, Sister Naima, alaykum salam. Uh, Rana uh, Zabalawi, uh, alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, sister Banazir Basha, wa alaykum salam. Jazakallah khairan for your dua, dear sister. Uh, sister Rahima, jazakallah khairan for your dua, sister Rahima as well. We received your dua, may Allah reward you, Rabbil Alameen. Abdul Qadir Al Albani, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sultana, I think from Emirates, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan for your dua. Uh, Fatima uh, Tahseen, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Tamir Al Masri, wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa وبركاته فروم اتلانتا براذر علي فروم انديانا وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته فاطمة الحمد لله ام فيلينج جود الحمد لله سيستر فاطمة الحمد لله سامي يوسف وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته سيستر سارة وعليكم السلام جزاك الله خيرا سيستر سارة فور يور دعاء مي الله ريورد يو جزاك الله خيرا براذر دين وعليكم السلام براذر دين جود تو هاف يو ان شاء الله اي ويل جيف يو كول ميبي تومورو تو انسر يور كويشن ان شاء الله أكمل حق وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته مكتب الدين وعليكم السلام وي هاف أجي وعليكم كنالكت وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته سيستر سهيلة وعليكم السلام مصطفى عبد الله نايس تو سي يو مصطفى ما شاء الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله يو أند يور براذر إسماعيل أند يور فاميلي آر ويل كيورد كومبليتلي إن شاء الله مي الله جيف كويك ريكفري تو براذر إسماعيل يا رب العالمين أند هيز فاميلي أز ويل دوس أور أدمن باي ذا واي بيكوز أ لوت أوف ذا بيبل أندرستود ماي أدمن أت سي إم سي سي بات ماي أدمن ماي فيرتشوال أدمن جروب وي هاف أبو سانا مؤمن وعليكم السلام فروم أستراليا جود تو هاف يو Uh, جزاك الله خيرا سيستر ام محمد uh, خرم وعليكم السلام from لندن uh, will be there a question and answer at the end yes ان شاء الله uh, جزاك الله خيرا سيستر رانا زعبلاوي uh, you know my, my family uh, my mother has that last name زعبلاوي I'm, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm thinking this is maybe a relative of mine or something but uh, وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ناصر وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته برادر ناصر ال uh, اتش uh, السل... uh, هي امريكا فيه فيه السلام لعنهم الله <تصفيق> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته برادر سيستر مريم وعليكم السلام غلام مهدي ار يو باك ان تاون غلام جود تو هاف يو ما شاء الله uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم القسط الهندي uh, نعم اي هيرد اوف ات اي هيرد اوف ات سمية uh, حسين وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته ابو عمران وعليكم السلام برادر شرجيل جزاك الله خير برادر شرجيل في الدعاء اي جات يور ايميل بارك الله فيك الفا وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله سميرة ابراهيم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته سيستر شراف فروم سريلانكا وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ذاكر ال ال سي فروم دالاس تكساس جود تو هاف يو برادرز ذاكر 
Uh, we have Alia Fatima, wa alaykum salam, Ayan Badul, wa alaykum salam, Badri Osman, wa alaykum salam, Hana Zamura, wa alaykum salam, uh, Idris Muhammad, wa alaykum salam, brother Idris, how are you? Uh, Hayat Muhammad, wa alaykum salam, sister Fatuma, wa alaykum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, with this, inshallah, brothers and sisters in Islam, let's begin our class today and let's learn about Ghusl, ritual bath. We're going to learn about ghusl, ritual bath, insha'Allah, uh, tonight, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Uh, are you ready to learn? Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, first of all, uh, this is uh, a series of lectures which will be followed with a, with a contest. Uh, we're looking at January 31st. We could extend it a little bit more because uh, we really want to take our time explaining how to uh, perform wudu, how to perform ghusl, and also how to pray properly. Inshallah, yani we, the first five chapters were really kind of uh, informational, uh, but this is the most important piece of the. Uh, so, inshallah, we're going to do our best. There are 13 prizes. Uh, Brother Abu Jood donated all of them. May, may Allah reward him. He's from uh, Michigan. Uh, 1500 first place, 750 second place. Uh, 500 third place and from 4th until 13 100 dollar each uh, uh, insha'Allah uh, brothers and sisters we have the books out know your lord uh, and worship your lord both of them are out uh, they are available in amazon you can request order your ebook or paper copy on amazon uh, amazon.com slash karima you should be able to get uh, to my uh, page there and you can order those two books, insha'Allah. We have the CMCC Virtual Academy. Uh, it's uh, every weekend. Uh, your, your kids really are going to enjoy it a lot if you uh, uh, sign them up, insha'Allah. This is how you sign them up, uh, ta'ala. Myself, I teach the Islamic studies, myself. And I enjoy that. I have a class of almost uh, uh, 30 uh, plus uh, kids, mashallah. I really enjoy teaching them Islamic studies virtually through Zoom, through Zoom. Tayyib, uh, moving forward, we base the whole series on the statement of Imam Malik. Imam Malik said that the affair of the Muslims today, for it to be fixed, the same exact curriculum which fixed the first generation will fix this generation. That's what Imam Malik is saying. Don't, don't, don't look for a curriculum. Don't look for a manhaj. Don't look for uh, a prescription. Don't look for a, a blueprint. Don't. It's there. It's available. It's preserved. The same thing which will uh, fix us, uh, the same thing which can fix us, is what fixed the first generations of Muslims. That's the meaning of the statement of Imam Malik. And I mentioned, brothers and sisters in Islam, that this ummah wasted two things. The sweetness of faith, the sweetness of Iman, the proper comprehension of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Tawheed, Al Iman. Because if you properly understand it, comprehend it, and live it, it will give you a sweetness. It will give you tranquility. It will give you serenity. Even during the hardest moments, like sickness, like loss of wealth, like loss of, of, of children, it will help you stand the sweetness of faith. What is the solution? Worship your Lord every Thursday. Join me. We're teaching La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And that book is available out there. Hopefully you can get it inshallah. The second thing which we're dealing with today, the comfort of the salah. Imagine the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he wanted to pray, he used to tell Bilal, Ya Bilal, let's run away from this world and let's find the comfort in salah. Muslims, unfortunately, now they get rid of the salah. Oh, I have to pray. Let me get done with it. La. It used to be a resort. 
And we're dealing with this today, brothers and sisters in Islam. We are at chapter 7 of the book, which talks about the conditions. In the previous chapter, we said any act of worship, any act of worship has conditions. Normally, things that you have to do before engaging in the act, like wudu, making wudu, it's a condition. Do you make wudu during the salah or before the salah, before you see Allahu Akbar, before? It's a condition. So something that comes before what? Before launching the act, initiating the act. We call this a condition. Next, pillar. Pillar is a structural part. Something in the structure. Mahiyat al-amal. It's within the act. If, if one pillar is gone, the act is void. It's no longer there. Then duties. Wajibat, duties, things that you have to do, obligatory, three. Then recommended, don't call them sunan or sunnah. And I'll explain to you way, later on why we shouldn't do that. But recommended, things which if you do, you get rewarded. You elevate the quality of the act. If you skip it, if you drop it, the act still valid, but you just lose an extra reward. You suffer no penalties. Then permissible. That is four, five. Permissible things. Things that are permissible to do. Okay? Then disliked. Things when you do them, you lose the reward, but the act still stands, still valid. And then nullifiers. <laughs> Imagine that. Those seven. Conditions, pillars, duties, recommended, permissible, five, disliked, nullifiers, seven. Oh. Now we're dealing with the conditions of the Salah. Now, when the scholars talked about the conditions of the Salah, they said there are two types. Conditions which make the Salah compulsory. Mandatory upon you. And conditions which make your salah valid. Three and six, total nine. Three and six, total nine. Yeah, and some added four regarding the sisters. We're going to explain that. But you have to be a Muslim. If you're a Muslim, you attain the age of puberty. What is, what is that? Not maturity, puberty. A person attains the age of puberty if he experiences with dreams, ejaculation, or the growth of hair in private areas and under the armpits. These are physical signs. If it appears even at the age of seven, خلاص. طيب. What if these physical signs do not emerge? Then the final cut, the age 15. 1 and 5, 15. But lunar, not Gregorian. We add the sisters attaining their menses, their monthly cycle. So these are uh, if you are sane, a Muslim, sane, not crazy, you're conscious, you reason, and you're a Muslim, and you attain the age of puberty, whether through the physical signs or whether attaining the age of 15, then these are the conditions which Salah becomes mandatory upon you. You have to pray. You have to pray. Now, what we're dealing with today is the six conditions which will make your salah valid. When you pray, your salah becomes valid. We want to detail that. We want to talk about that. Six conditions. And they normally come before saying, Allahu Akbar. 
which we call takbiratul ihram the launching takbirah the initiating takbirah the opening takbirah the starting takbirah whatever we can choose the first allahu akbar there are six things which you have to do we're still dealing with one first of all what are these six six things they are right here in front of you do you see it right here the physical purity Raful hadath your body has to be in a state of purity so your body has to be in a state of purity your body normally suffers two cases minor ritual impurity major ritual impurity i want you to memorize these terms and alhamdulillah in the book i stick if, if i use one term i just repeat it minor ritual impurity major ritual impurity impurity the opposite of purity minor ritual impurity necessitates making wudu to remove it or tayammu we're gonna come to that major and we explained this last lecture just go and lecture eight you're gonna find it wudu wudu you're gonna find it watch it the major ritual impurity which is our subject of today necessitates ritual bath again i'm gonna call ghusl ritual bath wudu ablution ritual bath uh, ritual we added the word ritual just to distinguish it from what from the regular bath which you take because you want to clean up or you want to cool down your body because it's extremely hot but those are this is what we will discuss today inshallah the second is the removal of najas impurities certain things our religion identify them to be impure for example urine feces or stool number one number two you must remove them from the body you must remove them from the cloth or anything that you pray in like shoes and you must remove them from the place where you will observe the salah clear right ah, crystal so this is number two number three covering the aura you must cover the aura and you must make sure that during the salah the aura will not be uncovered and that goes to the brothers who wear very tight tanks shirts when he bows down his back is what shows oh. number four the entry of the time facing the qibla and having an intention which salah are you praying see these are the conditions today brothers and sisters in islam we want to talk about the physical ritual purity which is the second part which is to remove the major ritual impurity which is ghusl this is the evidence i kind of shared this with you last time the evidence uh, for the uh, tahara uh, the verse in surah al-ma'idah and in surah al-nisa يا ايها الذين امنوا اذا قمتم الى الصلاه فاغسلوا وجوهكم وايديكم الى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وارجلكم الى الكعبين وان كنتم جنبا فاطهروا وان كنتم مرضى او على سفر او جاء احد منكم من الغائط او لامستم النساء او لامستم النساء فلم تجدوا ماء فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وايديكم منه ما يريد الله ليجعل عليكم من حرج ولكن يريد ليطهركم وليتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تشكرون verse number 6 chapter 5 المائده read it 
It's almost half, three quarters of a page. One verse. Hadith Abi Huraira that Salah is invalid without wudu. Tayyip, moving forward. The impurities, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the opposite of purities. I can explain that. The minor ritual impurity, to remove it, one must perform ablution wudu or tayammum. Major ritual impurity, which is the subject of today, to remove it, one must perform a ritual bath, which is ghusl or tayammum. Also, uh, we will talk about this today, inshallah, and this is our subject. Tayyib, what is ghusl? Ghusl. We call it, we call it what in English? Memorize these lines, guys. Ritual bath. Not just a bath, ritual. Ritual meaning that something that is uh, legislated. Allah told you to do it. Ritual. Linguistically, the root meaning of the Arabic word ghusl refers to washing the entire body with water paired with the intention. That you must have the intention. Technically, it's to pour wo uh, uh, pure water and purifying water over the entire body in a specific way to restore the body's state of puberty for the, pur for the purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, worry more about the technical definition, the one in yellow. So, ghusl, or ritual bath, technically, it means to pure, uh, I'm sorry, to pour, pure, and purifying water. So, the water in itself has to be pure. Pure also means halal, it's your water, you didn't steal it. And purifying, that the water can purify, it's not mixed. Uh, the color is not gone, the smell is not gone, the, uh, uh, the color, the smell, and the scent is not gone, the smell. Still smells like water. That you do not use Coca-Cola or Pepsi, right? That's what is meant here. In a specific way, what is the intention? Number one, to restore the state of the body from the state of ritual impurity, to, to, to be pure, to be tahir, in order to do what? To worship Allah. You may have a specific intention, like we'll explain, but in general, the ghusl to uplift or to remove the major ritual impurity is to worship Allah, to prepare your body so you can pray, you can recite the Quran, you can do adhkar, whatever you want to do, inshallah. طيب, moving forward, when do you have to perform ghusl? Because there are two types of ghusl. There is the mandatory ghusl and there is the recommended ghusl. Now let's deal with the first type. When do you have to perform the first type? When do you have to make ghusl? When? Oh. The state of major ritual impurity could happen due to the following reasons. Conscious or unconscious ejaculation with dreams. The discharge of semen, of ulmani. Whether the person does it consciously, by Billah, touching or by touching anything, or in a dream, having a wet dream. So this is one. Number two, intercourse. And what is meant by intercourse here, brothers and sisters in Islam? Even if there is no discharge. إِذَا الْتَقَ الْخِتَانَانَ hadith, When the two circumcised parts of the man and the woman uh, uh, encounter one another. Uh, the head of the uh, man uh, organ that is the part. When it penetrates this part, then ghusl becomes whether he finished or not. We're getting there. Death, which is shrouding someone who is dying. Women going through their monthly period. Sisters who finish their monthly period and they want to pray. They have to take ghusl first. And they want to have a relationship with their spouse. 
They have to do ghusl first, brothers and sisters in Islam. Or sisters who delivered and she clear of the bleeding, the post-delivery childbirth, but up to 40 days. Up to 40 days. Because after that, even if she still bleeds, it's called istihada, she can actually pray. Regarding the sisters, by the way, when they are going through their menses or going through the post-delivery or childbirth period of bleeding, any salah they miss while they are in these conditions, those two conditions, they don't have to make it up. They only make up the salah which they became pure. Like let's say the sister became uh, pure uh, uh, 10 minutes before Asr. She has to pray the whole. Even if she, because of a reason that is not within her ability or capacity, uh, did not take the ritual bath. She still has to, to do the whole. Now, to come out of the state of major ritual impurity for both men and women, they must perform a complete body wash, which we call ghusl or ritual bath. Ritual bath. Or tayammum. You see, tayammum takes place, takes the place of wudu, takes the place of ghusl, when the person is licensed to perform dry ablution or tayammum. I call the dry ablution or tayammum. Good enough? Moving forward. When ghusl is recommended, when it is recommended to do ghusl, here is like nine scenarios. If someone is going to have more than one time with his wife or if he has more than one wife, it's better to do Wudu after each one, before Jumu'ah, before Salatul Eid, both Eid, before wearing the Ihram for both Hajj and Umrah, before entering Mecca, before standing on the mountain of Arafah during Hajj, after washing a dead person, it's recommended, by the way, all of these are recommended, after accepting Islam, after regaining the consciousness or waking up from coma. So these are nine scenarios where it is recommended to do ghusl, brothers and sisters in Islam. Ritual bath. Not for the sake of removing the rage, no. But it's recommended to do ghusl before these acts. It's a recommended. Tayyib, next. How to perform ghusl? There are two ways to perform a ritual bath, ghusl. The basic ritual bath and the recommended ritual bath. If you, don't want to, if you don't want it to be complicated, here it is. The basic, make sure you have an intention to remove the major ritual impurity. To remove the major ritual impurity. If the sister is clear her period, then her intention is to remove that. If you just had sexual intercourse with your spouse, then the intention is to remove that. You had a wet dream, then the intention is to remove that. So that's a key. And then you wash all of your body and you make sure that the water reaches every limb. Hair the roots, the roots of the hair. Every limb. The water reaches one time. The water covers all the body one time. This is a ritual bath. You don't have to worry about... That's the basic. The basic ritual bath. Here it is. There is the recommended one, which we'll explain, but here is the basic. The basic ritual bath comprises two things. To pour water over the entire body at least one time so that it reaches every part of the body, such as under the armpits, knees, and the back. As for the hair, we must run our fingers through the hair to ensure that not a single hair or root remains dry. 
very important to intend with the ritual bath to eliminate the state of major ritual impurity following janaba, which is post-sexual discharge, menses, post-child bleeding, nifas, for the purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the mandatory or the voluntary acts of worship. Brothers and sisters in Islam, you must remove anything that prevent the water from reaching these body parts. So that's the basic. But what about the recommended? Here is the recommended. Big list right here for you. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, based on hadith Aisha, used to make ghusl. Hopefully you can read all of these. Number one is the intention, saying Bismillah. Of course, if you are in a place that you cannot say Bismillah, then you say it in your heart, not articulate it. Wash both hands at least three times. Wash the private parts to remove impurities. Perform wudu just as you make wudu for the salah, excluding the two feet. Wash your head, hair, face, nose, mouth as many times as you want. You may use shampoos, conditions, conditioners, I'm sorry, at this stage. Then you end up with pouring water on your head and face down to the neck at least three times. Wash the entire right side of the body, starting with the top down to the feet. And make sure that your fingers go through your right toes. Do the same with the left side of your body. Moderation in using water. And you make the supplication which you make after the wudu. Intention ghusl. Bismillah. But I'm in a place I cannot mention Allah's name. I said it with my heart. I said it with my heart. I didn't say it. My heart said it. Wash the hands three times. The bombs, call them the bombs, because this is the hand, <laughs> the bombs, three times. Now you can go with your left and wash your private parts. Make sure all the impurities are removed from both the urine and the feces. And you clean this well. Good enough? Now, you take water and you wash that part until, until the neck. Wash your hair, use uh, shoulder and heads and, and uh, conditioner and two in one, whatever you want to do. You wash as many times as you want. Okay, you wash. Just, just regular washing. But the most important thing is at the end, you come with three handful like this. Three times. You're done with this part now. Good. Uh, I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, at the beginning, you make wudu. I forgot before this part. You make wudu like you make wudu for the salah. After you wash your private parts, you make wudu like you make wudu for the salah. Excluding your feet. So let me retreat here. So intention. Bismillah. You don't say it in a place. You're not supposed to say it. Just say it in your heart. Then you wash your hands three times. Then you wash your private parts. Very well. Then you make wudu as you make wudu for the salah. Excluding the feet. No feet now. Now you wash that part like I explained. The head as many times as you want, then three handful, two, three. Now, you take the right side, all the way, front and back, three times, and now you go down and wash your feet. And make sure that your fingers go through your toes. Three times, three times, you're done. Moderation in using water, and you say... أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين if you can say it if you can say it 
طيب داز غسل تيك ذا بليس اوف وضوء I know a lot of you are having this question when you perform غسل does it subsidize the wudu do you still have to wudu to wudu after the salah here it is if the ghusl you're making is to remove the major ritual impurity which is the mandatory ghusl not the recommended ghusl yes it does even if you do the basic ghusl even if you do the basic ghusl which is the one that you have an intention and you cover your body with water. It does. You can pray with that wudu, provided that you do not break your wudu from the time you come out of the bathroom. And remember how you break the wudu, touching yourself with a desire, touching your wife with a desire. These are all uh, breaking winds, passing wind or urinating. Then, so as long as you do not nullify the wudu, but the ghusl, طب what if you're making ghusl for a recommended purpose like al Jumu'ah, like al Eid? Can you pray with this? Yes, the second time. If you perform wudu, the recommended way, yes. Not the first time. Some of you may be confused here. I I'm sure a lot of you are not. We have two ghusl, basic, recommended, in how to do ghusl. The reason why we make ghusl mandatory, recommended. Let's deal with the mandatory. Why do we do ghusl mandatory? Because of sexual discharge, because of what dreams, because of menses, all of these then you have to make mandatory ghusl. If the intention is that, then that ghusl, whether it is basic, which is covering yourself with water, with the intention, or doing the recommended type of wudu, you can pray with this as long as you do not nullify your wudu afterwards, until the time you pray. But if your intention is to perform ghusl for recommended reasons, then you have to do the recommended wudu. So you have to do wudu at the beginning, like I did, or at the end. You do the basic and then you do ghusl. Very simple. All right? Suppose the ritual bath is from the mandatory type, meaning to remove the, the major ritual impurity, as in the case of sexual discharge, in the case, in this case, this ghusl suffices the ablution, according to the correct scholarly opinion. If he does not nullify his purity while doing his ritual bath, because removing the major ritual impurity includes the minor ritual impurity as well. That's the reason why. The voluntary ritual bath, the recommended, such as for Jumu'ah, Eid, will not take place the ablution unless you perform wudu, whether before or after the ghusl. Ah, we answer that question. Let's come to the dry ablution, tayammum. Sometimes we may, and there are six cases, when can we do tayammum? But in the case you cannot use water or water is not available, one of the two, and we're going to come to these cases. You hit the ground. You go over your face like this. And then your hand. That's how you perform tayammum. The dry ablution. You hit the ground. Then the face. Then the hands. Like that. Of course, the same evidence in, 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 in the verses in Surah An-Nisa and in Surah فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا The same verse, five, uh, uh, verse number six in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter five. Uh, if you read the verse, that there is a mention of tayammum there. O hadith Abu Umama, that uh, all of earth was made, uh, one of the six things which the Prophet was given, all of earth was made a place of salah, 
except of course there are some exceptions which we'll mention when we talk about salah and tahura ju'ilat li al-ard masjidan wa tahura all of earth was made a masjid for me i don't have to be inside a building to pray and tahura the sand the earth the rocks i can use it for purification those are the evidence how to perform it if water is not accessible or using water to perform ghusl or wudu may have health risk factors one may do tayammum which is to strike whatever covers the pure soil the earth such as sand stone dirt with both hands after formulating an intention to perform wudu or ritual bath and saying bismillah then he wipes his face and hands up to the rest starting with the right hand tayammum or the dry ablution places us in a state of ritual purity exactly like ablution or ritual bath furthermore we do not have to wait for salah time to enter to perform tayammum and we can observe salah touch the quran or do any acts which wudu allows us to do we can perform multiple salah with one tayammum if we did not nullify our state of ritual purity precisely like the case with regular ablution or ghusl and that's the beauty of religion here beauty of islam by the six cases are here when can we perform tayammum if someone is unable to find enough water to perform ablution you have water but this is the water that needed to make ablution if you have that much then do tayammum don't say i'm going to use this and no because that's not enough just do tayammum so you must have enough water to make wudu if someone has an injury or a particular illness water will worsen or delay the healing process based on his best judgment and assumption then he may do tayammum if the weather is freezing water as well and we cannot heat it and this will cause physical harm to the body we may do tayammum of water is close by but one is afraid to get it due to the fear of an enemy or a harming animal if you, if you go down to get the water a lion will jump on you or an enemy will shoot you uh, another scenario that you have water but it's public water you don't know whether it is public or private because remember one of the condition for the validity of wudu and ghusl that the water has to be halal you can steal water to to make wudu so what if there is water out there but you don't know whether it is privately owned or publicly uh, for public use it's up then no that's private i cannot use it if someone has a limited amount of water and needs to spare it for later use other than ablution or ghusl you're in the desert and you have that much water and you're in the desert for two days you need it for drinking cooking do tayammum and save your life with this so you have water but you need to use that water for cooking for drinking it's not enough to do wudu with then do tayammum if someone can obtain water but fears that salah time will expire he may perform tayammum and pray without repeating his salah uh, brothers and sisters in islam so that's it for today we did it here is the uh, regular inshallah i want to tell you that test is going to come from these questions here is test number nine define ghusl linguistically and technically when ghusl is mandatory when do you have to perform it when it is recommended to perform it how to perform the basic ghusl and the recommended ghusl when can ghusl take the place of wudu ablution mention one evidence for tayammum how to perform tayammum mention the six cases of tayammum so these are eight questions for you inshallah uh, alhamdulillah we did it so uh, right now we may uh, open our phone lines we have like 10 minutes inshallah maybe somebody can try our phone line but 
uh, we're done for today inshallah next next we're gonna go into the next condition which is what we're gonna know the impurities the list of impurities which we have to remove from our body our clothes and the place we pray assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum okay Hello? yeah it's working jazakallah khair yeah. jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yeah, it's working. Do you have a question, inshallah? Yes, I do have a question. Okay, go ahead. What is so, your name? So, okay. Okay, so my question is uh, when my when my dad bought this house, um he bought it out of mortgage, right? And uh like I'm thinking about like um like going to a stomach bank and buying um selling this house and then buying another house with a with a Islamic bank uh uh, okay, if you're asking about Islamic banking, I'm not sure there is an Islamic banking out there. Uh, you know, we really have to look at the contract. But these people who claim that they are Islamic, they are not really Islamic. I mean, just yes, just off yes, the bit here. Amja, Amja, uh, Amja said that. Read Amja some, carefully. Some read Definitely. Amja carefully. They always say only in a state of necessity. End of the rule. You see, that's the tricky part. Okay. That when you when you when you issue a ruling. And then you make the most important component of the ruling hidden somehow. That's that's where the trick is. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, assalamu alaikum. Malikum salam. Yes, name, state, and question, please. Oh, um, my name is. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, speak. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah, name, state, and question, please. Yeah, I'm uh, Muhammad Kayat, starting from Toronto. Okay, Muhammad, what is your question? Yes, uh, how are you, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing? My question is, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. So, my first question is, uh, when we do basic ghusl, uh, do we have to uh, rinse our mouth and nose as well, apart from washing the whole body? Uh, normally, if you do the basic ghusl, you have to wash the nose, you have to make sure that water gets inside the mouth, every place in your body. That's the, the, the key behind the, the basic ghusl, yes. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu okay. alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Name, name, state, and question, please. Um, Abdul Mahim, uh, Canada, and I have uh, two questions. First of all, like, if we are in a journey and we're returning back home and say, like, uh, we want to shorten Isha, uh, but I'll return home before the time for Isha ends, then uh, can I uh, pray a shortened Isha during the travel or should I yes. wait until I come home? Abdul Muhaymin, Abdul Muhaymin, yeah. even from Abdul Muhaymin, yeah. yeah. when you yeah. when you come back yeah. and the time for the Salah yeah. did not expire, you have to pray the Salah yeah. full, complete, no shortening. You got that? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, but can, can I shorten, shorten it on, on the travel, travel even though I'll come back before uh, if the time ends? If you know that you will reach your destination when Aisha is still there, wait and pray it full when you come back. Okay, okay. And my second question was, like, um, you know how some of the scholars said that Hua was a name of Allah, even though that's like there's no evidence for it, so we're like preparing for a debate with Hua? Christians, and we wanted to know about Abdul Muhaymin. Yeah, Hua, thing. Abdul Muhaymin. Yeah. Hua, and then you have yeah. to add a name to it. Hua Allah, Hua right. Al-Hay, yeah. Hua so Al-Qayyum. Yeah, so Hua would not count as a name. No, right? so no. Hua, like the, the Hua, brother. Hua, Hua means he. So where is the yeah, name? I know. So like uh, we always hear. Sufi saying it. But okay. The, the brother was I know exactly where you're going with that. That's why I'm telling you, you have to say, Huwa Allahu la ilaha illa huwa. 
الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن هو الله الذي لا العزيز الجبار سو هو انا نيم جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام يس نيم ستيت اند كويشن بليز اوكي ما نيم از خورم ام ستيت ان كولن فروم لندن Um, I've got five questions to ask. Is that okay? Five questions. Okay, because you're from London. But hurry up because my admin is going to run after me. Go ahead. Oh, okay. That does look okay. Thank you. Okay, so my first question is basically I was working in IT with software and I'm an employee for a company. It's not my own. And they've made a software and other businesses use it. So they have contracts with healthcare, finance, engineering, etc. So when there's a problem, they contact us and we help them when there's a problem. So for instance, if like a bank contacts us, is it the same as me helping the bank then? It is not, That's but my first question. it is not, but it's a gray area, Khurum. It's a gray area, 100%, okay. but it is not. But you do not, okay, my you see, you're not owner of the company, are you? You're not a decision making uh, individual, right? No, I'm the just an employee. Then, then it's your job. Then you have to do it because you agreed to work this job. Yes. Next question, please. Okay. My next question, again, is the IT job. But we're testing the security of a company now so it stays strong and it doesn't get hacked by cyber criminals. Again, it could be healthcare, engineering, mm -hmm. um, banking. So if the company gives me a client that's just, say, a bank. So I protect them to see... The same sure thing. People's the same exact thing. Okay. The same. It's a gray area okay. for the company. But for you, okay. as part of your contract, you have to do it. But uh, hopefully you have other okay. accounts beside that. That's not the exclusive accounts they have. If this is their exclusive yeah. accounts, insurance and, and banks, then you should be, be looking for another IT uh, company, inshallah. Oh, yeah, no, it's just one of them, but inshallah, I'll okay. do all that. You inshallah. Know, I get different ones. Yeah. Uh, Next. My fourth question. I've, I've bought something online with X Christmas coupons. It's like a coupon code you put in and you get 20% off. I didn't know, you know, everything related to Christmas was haram until a couple of days ago. The stuff that I've bought is like cosmetics and face care and stuff. Can I still use that or do I have to dispose of this? No, use it. But next time, just don't do it. But use it, inshallah. Okay. Don't, don't throw it away. Yes. Am I Okay, Salah, thank you. My final question. I'm in my final year of university, but when I applied for my student loan, I had no idea it was haram whatsoever. Um, I'm in my third year. I'm halfway through. Um, what should I do? Make sure that the first thing that you do, please, get rid of these student loans as soon as you graduate, okay? Inshallah. Okay. May Allah help you, Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allah khairan, guys. Okay, this is my last caller. Okay, Jazakum Allah khaira. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And don't forget, Wednesday we have the Maqasidic Tafsir, Surah al Rum, and worship your Lord. That is on uh, Thursday, inshallah. I'm sorry, caller, I have to sign out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم يا من على العرش استوى يا من خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى يا من أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأسعد وأشقى وأوجد وأبلى ورفع وخفض وأعز وأذل وأعطى ومنع ورفع ووضع يا من شق البحار وأجر الأنهار وكور النهار على الليل وكور الليل على النهار يا من هدى من الضلالة وأنقذ من الجهالة وأنار الأبصار وأحيى الضمائر والأفكار يا من تسمع كلامنا وترى مكاننا وتعلم سرنا وعلانيتنا 